Hey guys, it's Cali. We're reacting to horrifying things that happen on horror movie sets. The reason I'm reacting to it because, as you guys know, about a week ago, um, Jesse, I uh, talked about how doing the devil inside could be dangerous. And I'm hoping this video can really help you guys understand where I'm coming from. So yeah, um, before we get started, I just want to say, um, rest in peace to Clyde. That was Michael and Bridget's dog. He passed away. They uploaded a video about it yesterday. Apparently, if you guys didn't see the video, pretty much, I guess Clyde's been sick for months now. For, for a while, he's like on medication and stuff. He was going blind in one eye. It was sad, and he, he passed away on the porch. Kim was petting him, and he passed away. It's sad, because him, Bella, and Lazy are all gone now. They were like the three dogs they had for years. You know, almost as long as they've been doing YouTube. So it's crazy. <coughs> all three of them are gone. Now, I don't remember if Bella died this year or it was last year. I can't remember. I'll have to go back and look at the videos. But rest in peace to Clyde. I'm sorry to Michael and Bridget. You know, I teared up watching the video. You know, because dogs, man. I love dogs. Um, you know, Clyde was a good dog. Rest in peace. Um, at least you guys have Blue and Marlin. You know, so at least you're not totally without pets. I mean, hopefully that kind of brings comfort. You have them too. Um, but, you know, at least the all three of them are together now playing. So, it's sad. Also, happy belated birthday to my sister. It was her birthday yesterday. Um, got a really nice gift. She loved it. I made her cupcakes. Um, so yeah, happy belated birthday to her. But look, I know you guys don't understand the um, reality of the situation. A lot of you don't really are not into paranormal, don't necessarily believe, but Hopefully this video will help you start to understand to see where I'm coming from. So let's get started. I did watch this last night and I've watched it's scarier like this before. when you learn that horrors also know. took place on the sets for both the 1979 movie and the 2005 remake. The first Amityville movie starred James Brolin, who wasn't originally eager to take on the role, but eventually he accepted it because of something strange that happened. While reading the script one morning and getting to a scary section of the story, a pair of the actor's pants suddenly fell off a hanger, causing him to literally jump out of his chair in fright. James of course saw this as a sign that he needed to take the role, and the rest was history. Fast forward to the 2005 remake with Ryan Reynolds taking on the part that was originally played by James Brolin. During filming, Ryan Reynolds along with other cast members claimed that every morning at exactly 3.15am they would wake up. The reason why that's terrifying is because 3.15 a.m. was the exact time that Ronald DeFeo murdered his entire family in the house, and it becomes a whole lot more creepy. At one point during filming, there was also an actual dead body that washed up near the filming set in the boathouse in the backyard of the house. Actors and crew members always suspected that there was an otherworldly presence during the filming of the movie. Whether they were right or just overly paranoid, who knows. Okay, so I do forgot to mention, I do guys, guys, please watch this video all the way through. It is interesting. Um, this stuff is interesting regardless. But um, there are like, th th there's two movies that I know of that did not mention on here. Poltergeist, um, the little girl in Poltergeist, Heather O'Rourke, I believe that's how you say her last name. She passed away at the age of 12, I think. She had some sort of like, um... What was it to do with her intestines? Like she had some sort of blockage, I think, and it like exploded and she died. Something along the lines of that. And the sister, the older sister, um, got killed by her boyfriend. And there was someone else from the movie said it was uh, I believe one of the um native it was like Native American Indian person. And like um an Indian as not like the um like the Native American Indian, I believe, person. It was an Indian person, like the Native American. We'll just say Native American. Um, died too, I forget how, but three deaths in that movie. So that movie was kind of, you can say, it could be a coincidence, but three deaths. And like two of them were young people. Um, you know, and then on the Annabelle movie, I remember at least with Annabelle creation. I don't know about the other Annabelles. Um, they say like weird stuff was happening too on that set. So like the 2012 yeah, film this The is Possession not a joke, guys. is an unconventional horror movie that involves rabbis, Judaism, and a cursed Jewish relic called Dybbuk Box that attaches itself to a young girl. A Dybbuk Box is a wine cabinet claimed to be haunted by a Dybbuk, which is a malevolent wandering spirit that. Mm. I will say it doesn't have to be a wine cabinet. It could be any sort of box you trap a spirit in. There's usually some sort of stuff in there. I've seen people open up Divic boxes, usually like 
some sort of like animal bones and like so, like pictures or like just like little stuff in there and like ritual stuff you could say like Usually on the box, I have stuff written on the box, like Bible Enters stuff. Enters and possesses and the body like of a living so person until... Like until cabinet, the original Divic box, though, that this movie is based on is... What happened on the set of stuff. The Possession left even the star of the movie, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, feeling very uneasy. And he already had a lot of experience acting in horror movies and shows under his belt. Some of the seemingly supernatural things that happened included lights exploding for no apparent reason, as well as chilly breezes wafting through closed sets for no particular reason. But the scariest incident occurred when the storage facility where all the movie props were being held caught fire and burned to the ground. A team of investigators concluded that the fire was not started from an electrical fault or arson, but the actual cause for the fire couldn't be determined. The Dybbuk box used in the movie, which played an important role in the movie, was destroyed in the fire, and the cast and crew later refused to allow the movie's producers to replace the Dybbuk box for fear that it was cursed. The Conjuring is a movie that's supposed to be based on- Oh. Another movie. I don't think they mentioned The Exorcist. I can't remember, even though I just watched the video last night. But on um, The Exorcist, the movie set burned down except for the bedroom where the exorcism were taking place. Um, it's a, this is the original exorcism we're talking about, so I mean- that's a true, true story of the Perrin family, who claimed to be so, tormented yeah, by supernatural show. entities in the Rhode Island home in the 70s. While several of the family members spent time on the set during filming, the mother refused to go anywhere near it, as she was convinced... If you guys didn't know, the oldest daughter actually wrote a book about her, the experiences um, her and the family had in the house, so... Called House of Light. Several House unexplained of events Check that plagued the filming of this movie on set were proof that the spirits hadn't finished with them yet. For instance, when members of the Perrin family were visiting, a furious gust of wind suddenly rose and seemed to swirl around them. However, nobody could see any movement in any of the trees just opposite them, movement you'd expect to see from any normal gust of wind. Just a couple days later, the hotel that the actors and movie crew were staying in caught fire and everyone had to be evacuated. And it doesn't end there. James Wan, the movie's director, recalls working late in his office one evening when his dog started growling at something. He would get up to invest. Hmm. I know, keep pause, but if you're interested while I'm eating, it's cinnamon toast crunch churros. As you can see, they look like little churros. It's yeah, really good. But he couldn't find anything that would be antagonizing the dog. However, the dog had his sights on something across the room. It seemed he had focused on an unseen entity in one corner of the room. James took a break from working after this, having been legitimately freaked out. Vera Farmiga, who played the role of a paranormal investigator in the film, refused to take the script home with her, as she said it made her feel uneasy. She also couldn't read it at night because she became paralyzed by fear whenever she tried. After a phone call discussion with James Wan, Vera opened her laptop screen, and there were three digital claw marks from the upper right diagonal to the lower left. This wasn't the last time it happened, though. Her next experience came a few months later, literally on the day that she completed work on The Conjuring. She returned home to upstate New York, and when she woke up the next day, she discovered what she describes as three claw mark bruises across her thigh. In 1983, a movie based on the Twilight Zone series was released. During filming, actor Vic Morrow was killed on the set. Deaths on movie sets have happened many times. But what makes this extra disturbing was the fact that Morrow appeared to predict his demise just a year earlier. A year before filming of the Twilight Zone movie began, Vic took out a $5 million life insurance policy on himself, explaining to- And if you guys don't know what Twilight Zone is, from what I've heard, it was a series back in the day. I don't know what year, it was 70s, 60s, something like that, 80s, I don't know. But it's just like a scary series. Kind of, maybe, like, you could probably, I'm sure a lot of, you know, like, Goosebumps, if similar to that, just be like, like, you know, episode be kind of, it's like, it was a scarier show, pretty much. You guys can look it up. Friends um, and family members that he had a premonition you know, something bad was going to happen to him on an upcoming movie. He had seen it in a dream he had. Unfortunately, his premonition came true, because while filming a scene involving a helicopter for the Twilight Zone, the helicopter crashed and decapitated him. Two child actors were also killed in the accident, which prompted a lengthy investigation and court this case. It was later <laughs> revealed in court that the movie's concept artist unintentionally drew an identical image in his sketches to what actually happened, a burned-out helicopter in the middle of a river essentially foreshadowing the accident. 
The accident led to civil and criminal action against the filmmakers, which lasted nearly a decade. One of the children's fathers testified that he heard John Landis, the director, instructing the helicopter to fly lower. All four parents testified that they were never told that there would be helicopters or explosives on set, and they had been assured that there would be no danger, only a lot of noise. John Landis and four other crew members would be found not guilty on the three charges of manslaughter, having been the first time a director was charged due to a fatality on a film set. The 1976 film The Omen is another horror classic following the tale of a young boy named Damien Thorne, who was replaced at birth by his father, unbeknownst to his wife, after their biological child died shortly after birth. As a series of mysterious events and violent deaths occur around the family and Damien enters childhood, they come to learn he's in fact the Antichrist. The film almost wasn't going to be completed due to an alleged curse that surrounded filming of the movie. So many horrible things happened on the set of The Omen that it can be comparable to the amount of bad things to happen in the movie. The tragedies began with the son of the lead actor Gregory Peck taking his own life as soon as filming began. The next incident was when a crew member suffered major injuries after getting into a car accident while driving to the set. But the tragedies didn't stop there. The scriptwriter's airplane was struck by lightning en route to the film's location. And if that weren't enough, an airplane in which Gregory Peck and the movie's executive producer were traveling in was also struck by lightning in a separate incident. Harvey Bernhard, the producer, was on location in Rome when he was almost hit by a bolt of lightning himself. And believe it or not, the horrible luck involving airplanes continued. And it got much worse. One day, the crew had decided to use a private airplane to get from one film location to the other. However, just after the plane took off with a number of the crew on board, something went wrong and the plane went down, crashing into a road and hitting a car, which then crashed at a high speed into another vehicle. All 11 people involved in the accident were killed. Another tragic death associated with the movie set was that of Liz Moore. John Richardson, the Omen special effects expert, was driving through the Netherlands with Liz Moore when they were involved in a terrible car accident. Richardson escaped with very minor injuries, but Moore's head was completely severed when a tire smashed into their vehicle. This incident was eerily reminiscent of a scene in The Omen, in which the character Keith Jennings, investigating Damien's supernatural origins, is decapitated by a sheet of glass that comes loose from a vehicle on a construction site. Richardson later reported that just before the crash, he passed a road sign that read Omen 66.6 kilometers. Make of that what you will, but there's Freaky guys. Freaky, isn't it? I don't know. I just, no denying that it's not too real. far off to speculate that the production of the omen may have been cursed. That or it was all just an outrageous coincidence. All that can be said for sure is that the omen is a very iconic movie, and the chilling tales that surround its production have only helped to cement that legacy. So that's it guys so look i get it you some people might be saying oh that's just coincidence like if one or two things happen yeah you could possibly say okay coincidence but the amount of things that happen on all these movie sets can you really can you really sit here and tell me oh is it coincidence but see this is what i'm trying to get it's why you don't mess with demonic stuff and devil stuff you can say well but jesse's doing different da, da, da. but no he's still pretending to be the devil he's still messing with demonic stuff you know Look, I get it, you guys like the series. I admit, the first Devil Side was really good. I think that's, in my opinion, the best one of all the seasons was the first one. But that doesn't mean it's not dangerous. I mean, look at what's happening to Jesse now. A tree falling down, all the issues of this house. You know, one in Devil Side posters fall. I mean, that's just what we know of that's happening. We don't know if other stuff happened. Because you have to remember, Jesse doesn't really believe in the paranormal. So there could have been stuff happening, but he could have just written off as just something happened or wind blown or something like that you know so you have to remember that too there's could be stuff that's happened he hasn't shared with us or doesn't tell because he didn't, probably doesn't believe it's really anything so you have to keep that in mind this stuff is nothing to mess with you know you can bring dark stuff on to yourself like look at these movies look at like some of these movies had deaths associated with them you know and i get like the podcast and like heather she was sick you know sister was murdered it's like but still it's not weird another thing with poltergeist too I, for those of you who didn't see it there was a scene in there spoiler alert um where the little boy gets um has his clown doll and the clown doll attacks him and like wraps his hand around his neck well i've watched a video about it and apparently 
the clown doll like got stuck they couldn't get off the kid's neck like it got stuck on there for a little while so you know this stuff is nothing to mess with like movies are one thing you make a movie that's one thing that's you know but you see what i mean what happened you mess with this dark stuff this evil stuff this demonic stuff shit like this happens that's why i really want to you guys to understand it's not a joke it's not just a video it's not just a series this kind of real life complications you know or not complications one I can't think of the word, but it can have real life um, co consequences, you know? You know, it can affect Jesse's well being, can affect pe people around him, his family, Ashley, dogs. Dogs can see spirits. You know, dogs and babies, you know, and kids, not just babies, but kids in general, they can see spirits and communicate, you know? They're not like us, adults, because, you know, they don't understand that. You know, I forget what the, the word is that they are. They're more, like, is it clairvoyant? I forget what the word is, but they're able to see that stuff, you know. Because they are young, so they don't fully understand what that means, you know. But that's why you don't mess with this stuff. You can not just be putting yourself in danger, but the people around you in danger. So keep this in mind, guys. You know, I'm not trying to scare you. I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer. I'm trying to just show you guys the truth that this is just not fun and games. The, as always, when I do a reaction video, the link's going to be in my description. Um, you know, top of my description if you want to check out the video. Shout out to Mr. Nightmare. I've watched his videos before. He's really cool. He makes really cool videos. But, um, I love you guys. I hope you can understand now where I'm coming from. You know, but follow me on my socials. Follow Khan on the Insta. Subscribe to Josh. Subscribe to Sounds Good Juggy. Subscribe to Dan. Subscribe to Jacob. Subscribe to Caleb. Subscribe to Colin. Guys, please subscribe to me. Please like and please comment. I really want to hear your thoughts in the comments. Now, see you randomers in the next video. Peace.